fundamentally for me, going dark is the emergence of technology into the sort of criminal justice space. It presents a number of challenges that I think uh, we haven't uh, really thought through as a society in terms of traditional ways of collecting evidence, of preserving evidence, of presenting evidence, and of uh, pursuing criminals. I think the other thing about going dark is that offers to the criminal element a whole new dimension, a whole new enabling dimension to their criminality that uh, I don't think we've, we've considered. So what are the challenges? Well, the challenges are, A, keeping pace with uh, technological changes uh, in terms of having uh, investigative resources, both human and otherwise, that, uh, that uh, keep pace. The other is sort of balancing the understanding of privacy in the law-abiding citizen's mind and what implications our efforts to get uh, tools and support for criminal investigations in the, in the technological digital world, how that's being understood by the average Canadian. And I think um, th that's the real challenge because any effort to try and advance our investigative capacity is typically understood as a broadening of police powers rather than a keeping pace with an exploding technological facilitating uh, 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 criminality. So let's, let's talk about warrantless access to subscriber information. Why is that important? Well, because the pace and speed of investigations now, and I'm talking now just your common garden variety criminality, almost always features some digital component. So when, uh, I use this example, my niece, uh, who was a young girl, about 12, a couple of years ago, my sister called me and said, Bob, there's some trucker <laughs> that is talking to my niece, or to her daughter, online. And it's improper. It seems like he's trying to bring her along. And um, what do I do? I said, well, call the police. Well, what are they going to do? Well, I don't know. They'll, they'll maybe see if they can find out who it is. But in the olden days, if I can use that term, if we had calls on a telephone where someone was calling to say, you know, have a uh, obscene phone call, we'd be able to go and uh, get the information from the phone company, find out who the subscriber is, and get an investigation going. In the case that I'm talking about, my niece, there was no basis because the criminal threshold hadn't yet been breached. Nobody could argue that there was a reasonable ground to believe that this trucker who was talking to my 12-year-old niece was doing it for a sexual purpose, although that was certainly the, uh, the suspicion. We couldn't have gotten the subscriber info on that guy. So that's a quick illustration. The basic subscriber information is not private communications. It's like a phone book, you know, and uh, it seems, and in fact, if we go a little deeper, it's like an address. When we go into a community, I, I started my police career in a community doing community policing. Couldn't have done it if there was no numbers on houses. Couldn't have done it if there wasn't license plates, right? If everybody walked around with a bag over their head. Like, you can't do that. You can't enforce the laws that a society has brought to bear uh, in an anonymous world. You just can't do it. So if there was a model of administrative access, um, how do you prevent potential abuses? Well, <coughs> so right now we have CPIC, for example, right? I'm a big analogy guy. So we have very tight administrative controls on CPIC. Even with those controls, we have the odd instance where an officer with access misuses it. And so I can't sit here and say that it's going to be a perfect um, you know, system that will guarantee no infractions. But I can say and demonstrate to people that we have the ability to track and action any sort of misuse of that uh, uh, administrative access. And uh, over the years, I think we've built a very credible and accountable information management regime around CPIC and around license plates and so on. 
Uh, you'll see every once in a while in the newspaper, online, you'll see uh, officers being dismissed for misuse of uh, CPIC information or disciplined. So, you know, it, it's going to happen, likely, but I think what, back to the reasonable test, Canadians can be persuaded that there is a reasonable, reliable administrative oversight mechanism that it can be uh, uh, seen externally.